All right, so there I was, 14 years old, 14 years old. Follow me here, 14 years old, not driving yet, although we had some farm equipment and I drove a tractor and a big kind of farm truck on our property. That was legal back then. But we also had four wheelers and three wheelers and I'll never forget the time, my first run in with the police, really like my first, well, second run in. You see, when you were emptying gas, we would just drive up. This is local. We would just drive up to the gas station with our three-wheelers, my friends and I, back. And we were kind of in the country. This is Long Island. And if you don't know New York, there is some country still left in Long Island, although it's very expensive. But we had some property and we were driving. But when we ran out of gas, we went to the police station. Not to the police station. We went to the gas station. And the police, you're not allowed to do that. You're supposed to fill up the. You're supposed to fill up your cans and then bring it to your house. You're not allowed to drive on the main roads. And of course, we got chased by the police all the time. But that really, that was kind of like my first run in with the police. The second was related to it. You see, as a 14 year old, I was a bit of a hell raiser. And as a bit of a hell raiser, we would just get in trouble. I was really active. I didn't cause a lot of problems, but I'll never forget my first time I got arrested, so to speak. At 14, I was, I say first time. It's not like I've been uh, arrested many times, but I would say I did get arrested and I was 14 years old and I was with friends. We were down kind of a backcountry road and we thought it would be fun for the slow cars on the 40, I think it was 35 mile an hour or 40 mile an hour uh, speed limit in our in their particular area. It was about maybe a mile or mile and a half from the house. I always actually remember it exactly. And instead of waiting or going on the trails, we were passing cars. We were passing cars on the road. And I would say as my friend took off in the woods and he got away and unfortunately my three wheeler was not fast enough and I got pulled over. And it was a good lesson. The police officer was he was he was nice, but I remember I was scared out of my mind. I, I think I had to change my my shorts because I knew like, uh oh, I'm going to jail. And what he did was ne what the next thing he did was awesome. He said, well, he's like, you can't drive this on the road. So he's like, I know your parents. I want you to turn around, turn this around, and I want you to turn it off. And he, I gave him the key. I believe I gave him the key. Uh, maybe they didn't, yeah, they did have key. I gave him the key and he made me walk. He made me push the three wheeler back to my house. It was a mile and a half, about a mile, mile and a half. Maybe it feels like 10 miles, right? It's kind of like that story of walking to school in a snow drift, 10 miles. It was like a probably good mile, mile and a half that I had to walk my three wheeler. He did, literally was behind me in the car. So anyway, that was my first run in the, with the police. Now I have a lot of other stories. That was my first I say respect as I look back of it and he was nice to my parents. I got in trouble with my parents, but you know, I was an active kid. Unfortunately, I haven't had too many run-ins with the police because my parents taught me right from wrong. They taught me. Now, I did have some moments where I went probably a little too fast in a car and I've gotten a couple of speeding tickets, so forth, so on. But I want to share this with you because this is my daily dose, episode 151. I wanted to just bring this as an encouragement. Now, if you're if you're all for like the whole defunding the police and all that stuff, now this is not meant to be political. This is just my experience and why I am so grateful for our men and women in blue, our police officers who help protect and serve our cities, our families, and even just today actually inspired me to make this daily dose about our police officers. You know what? And while you might look at my color, my skin, and say, well, it's easy, you're white, and so forth, so on. I just want to share with you the experience of all different color police officers that I've had, and I'm, my experience with all different kinds of people. And I just want to share a little bit that. So if you are, like all four of the men and women in blue, this is going to be an encouraging post. Essentially, this is not to cause controversy. If you are if you got pulled in because you're like, oh, no, we got a defund. Well, this message isn't for you, so just move along. But I can tell you, I had a conversation. You saw a post yesterday, my daughter starting to drive. She has her permit, 15 years old. So what is what goes on in a dad of a 15, 13, 15, 14 year old? A couple things go on like, oh no, she's getting a little older. Oh no, she's getting more and more and more beautiful. Oh no, there's gonna be a lot of weird, crazy, messed up people who are gonna to try to take advantage in all different types of ways, right? From friends to people to men. And I was something that's something that really, honestly, as a dad, 
I'm, I'm not a bit, I'm not terrified for what we're teaching my daughter as far as values and stuff. I'm terrified for the other wackos that are out there, right? And again, why I'm like, okay, so perfect example. As I'm thinking about that, I'm, I see today and I'm looking into, um, I was just doing some work and I saw something come up about, like we hear about all these predators and sex predators and sex trafficking and all this stuff and where, where, are, they, where are they preying on, right? 15 teenage girls. Um, and as sickening as that is, it also is like making me feel like I know I can't protect just by myself, but I also know police officers. Perfect example. I had a lunch with one of my close friends who happens to be a police officer, local here, great guy. I've known him for years. I can't tell you how many times he showed up for me and for my family. Now, we've been in the same neighborhood for 18 years, but I would say well, hurricanes, this is hurricane season. I remember because they, the police had to stay on the aisle on here where I live at the beach and there's kind of an island, they closed the bridges and our men and women in blue, you know, they looked after the city and they were watching and making sure things, even if it didn't go as exactly as planned, they still, my friend took a peek at my house. He let me know, he keep me up to date. It was great. It was a relationship we've built. And then even today, just today, I want to share with you, and there's so many stories in between, in between, but just today, as I'm thinking about my daughter and driving and 15, and if you're a dad, this is going to resonate with you uh, because I don't want to go to jail for killing somebody who's trying to stalk my daughter, but I will go to jail if that's what it comes to. And I would say is it definitely, I feel a sense of, of there's a bit of comfort that I feel, although you can't be too comfortable, and you never know, right? But just to know that I have men and women that are being paid, that are get a salary to care for our city, to care for, even despite the bad ones. There's bad people all over the place, whether you're a police officer, whether you're a priest, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're you know, in the government, all that. There's bad people everywhere, right? So if we were to actually <laughs> like look to throw stones at everybody, we probably have to throw the stone at ourselves first. So with that, I'm just saying this as an, an, an encouragement to my police officers. If you're listening, please share this with a police officer. Please share this with the men in blue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should fund them even more, whether it's to make sure that they're qualified and equipped to make sure they don't do any wrong arrests and things like that. But nobody's perfect. And it doesn't discount the fact of the terrible things that happen in our world. But I had a conversation just today through messaging and I said, hey, and I said, you know, there's this kind of suspicious looking character that I've kind of come across in the last couple de days. And there was reason, I'm not going to get into all that, but I think of my daughter, I think of her going to the beach, I think of this. And then I'm like, it was really comforting to know that I can reach out to somebody who's being paid for to help protect and serve the citizens here. And I was like, can you imagine? Here's what I would love for people that want to defund police. I say, why don't you move to those countries that are defunded and see how that goes? I would say you probably give it three months before you come chasing back with the tail between your legs. And again, this isn't to get angry with them. It's just to share the truth. I don't know if I had to deal with somebody who looks suspicious. I don't necessarily want to feel like I'm going to have to do it, but I will do it if I have to. But it is always helpful to know that I'm a call away. Listen, my kids are growing up when they were younger and I'll never forget. This is another story. Sorry, here got the sunlight coming up. The sunshine's coming up. I'll never forget as my kids grew up growing up, my son, and you know, if you've followed me at any length of time, you knew he was a skater at some, at one period of time here, we're at the beaches, there's lots of skateboarders, but there's lots of trouble you can get into. A lot of kids skateboard because there's no, there's just no other, that's their only outlet. They got parents that aren't involved as much. I was at, oftentimes the only adult at the skate park with the kids. There was other ones, there's some great ones. I wasn't the only one, but a lot of times I was. I knew kids that were as young as eight years old, they're getting dropped off at the skate park for the whole day. They leave them with a bag of chips and a couple sodas and, and you know, they come back and pick them up when it was dark at nine o'clock at night. That's the thing I'm talking about. But why I say that is when I'm talking about police officers, hear me out on this, is that my fellow police officers here local who I saw who smiled and waved at the kids as they walk. And when I walked my kids to school and they got a little older, <coughs> my son who started to skateboard and who would show up. And I remember police officers just engaging with this, like the young people in the neighborhood. It like really just blew me away. Just thinking about like, hey, they're just... 
police officers aren't there just to, to bust the bad guys. They're they're also helping support the good guys, the good people that are trying to do good in this world and, and actually live a quality life and live according to some laws and some rules that are pretty straightforward, right? You do wrong things and you should... You should go to prison or you should get arrested if you do wrong things, right? And I think it's pretty safe to say for the most part that we, most people, and maybe you didn't grow up and you didn't know it's not good to shoot people or good to kill people or good to steal from people or good to hurt people or good to do whatever damage to people's property and all those types of things. And as I say that, all I have is the utmost respect the utmost respect, and I'm so encouraged by not just my friend who I had lunch with this week, and just, a, it's a privilege. The guy is such a stand-up, actually, out of anybody I've met and people in my entire life, some of the police officers that I've been around, some of the most upright guys that I've ever met before, ever, who truly love the job they have, the position, and it is hard. I can't imagine. Even now, today, we had this conversation, I said, man, I don't know how much you could be paid. Uh, there's, it's not enough. It's kind of like school teachers who don't get paid enough, right? And their jobs are right now really a struggle. But for those police officers, man, I just feel for them. I know, I almost think like, hey, if they decide to defund the police here, uh, like I think citizens should start to fund them themselves. Maybe it's funding them themselves, having the having the citizens fund. Well, we kind of do, right? <laughs> We're paying taxes. But I will say is I don't think they get paid enough. And at least I can say for those of you who've had maybe bad circumstances with the police, look at all the other people in your life. Chances are you've had some bad run-ins with not just police, with maybe bad neighbors. I sure the heck have. With maybe just some, some bad people that you've been around, maybe at the grocery store, Maybe in relationships, maybe in jobs, crooked people, you know, bitter people, people who are doing bad things. I was like, there's no different in the police world, but are we defunding businesses? Are we defunding schools? Are we defunding relationships? Maybe, but think of where the world would be without a little bit of law and order. It's going to be chaos. And I can tell you, I hope and pray that that never, that day never comes. I can kind of see what's happening in this country, where it's going, and I don't even pay much attention. But I can take a look at the areas that are trying to, de which really blows me away, is where they need more, more and more police officers now more than ever, is they want to take them away more than ever. And I was like, uh, I don't know what kind of common sense that comes from, and maybe it's some. Oh, there you are. All right. Sorry, you lost me. I don't know if I was on pause or what. But I can say is I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not afraid either. I would say I'm not afraid because I don't think that day, that day is going to come. I think for the most part, Americans are smart enough to know that there needs to be some law and order in this country. And I know it may feel like we're far, far away from it now and change does need to happen. But I can tell you one of the last things I'm hoping and praying for is that there's a defunding of the police. There's nothing. There's nothing. If you are to really think about that for a moment. If you're, hey, defund the guys that are doing bad things. I'm all for that. Put them in jail, right? That's fine. Do all that. But for the amazing, the amazing men and women in blue who protect and who serve and who literally fight with their hands, and even if they have to fight with their guns at some point, is like, I'll tell you what, isn't that kind of where our country is founded on, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a battle going on right now for people in general. And I'll tell you what, people are trying to get taken out. Police officers are trying to get taken out. This world is trying to get taken out. But right now, my focus and my passion in this message, this one message, is to just show my appreciation. I am so honored and grateful to know some awesome police officers, to be grateful for the police officers, the ones who scrape the bodies off the streets when they get hit by cars that help the ones that help the moms and dads when they're getting, their moms and dads that are getting abused in their homes, the children that they go and have to break out of, the ones that are breaking, that are breaking the chains of those that are being sold into sex trafficking, those kind of guys. Like they are some of the bravest people I've ever met. Like it almost wants me to go back in and say, you know, what? I want to become a police officer. Like, that's the thing. And you know what the crazy thing is? I don't think too many people want to be police officers right now. They're like, oh, heck no. Not in this world. No way. I can't. Uh, how would I be able to be a police officer? Like, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my question. How do you expect a police officer to be if they can't police? Right? So anyway, that's my thoughts. And I'll tell you what. 
it's a it's a scary time but my encouragement is if you if you're listening to this and maybe this is triggering you this message wasn't for you this message was for those of you who really have some really great stories and who have that support and know and they're pleased and even if you feel maybe you don't it may be it may be time to start looking at the ones who do it's easy for us to draw our attention to the ones that we're not that aren't doing the right things the police officers that maybe are doing the wrong things, the bad things. But how about focus on all the amazing ones that are out there? The ones that hate helping families like me, helping my children, really a big part of you know this world and a really, really major important part of this world. The last thing we need is to get her, to be rid with them, right? <laughs> anyway, I don't know what the whole solution is. Of course, there's there needs to be change, but I do know this guy right here in my family is very proud and honored to have police officers patrol these streets and take care and cover after us. Take care and have a blessed day. I hope this, this message found you well.